The Samsung Galaxy Note 4 is a phablet, one of the very best on the market right now actually, but its 5.7 inch screen can be a polarizing factor, so much so that another popular device, the iPhone 6, will likely also come to mind if you're considering a new handset, especially if you're uncertain that a bigger screen is necessarily the better choice. In that kind of scenario, when you're feeling on the fence between two form factors, digging out the pros and cons of both phones can swing the discussion in either one direction. So take your legal pad out, for we're about to go through the Note 4s and the iPhone 6s every nook and cranny. This is Chris with Phone Arena, let's get this started. Putting aside the differences in size for now, it should be immediately obvious that the underlying design philosophy with Samsung and Apple is quite different. For its part, Samsung definitely managed to create the most attractive Note device yet. The phablet's most basic shape is still of a rounded rectangle, but some changes are impossible to miss. For example, Samsung has added four bumps at the four edges of the Note 4, which would better absorb shock from the inevitable drops that most devices go through. Also different are the phone's frame and rear shell. We're now looking at a metal encasing and a newly textured but still fake leather back. With the iPhone 6, Apple continues its track record of using aluminum only for the body, but there are some generational changes from the now aging iPhone 5S. The most important of those is the switch to a circular tube-like frame and the addition of several contrasting plastic bands at the back where the antennas reside. Obviously, deciding which one you like more is a personal matter, but we tend to like the way the iPhone 6 sits in our hand a little better. Unpinning the topic of size, it should be perfectly understood that the Note 4 is a significantly bulkier device in all possible meanings of the word. So height, width, thinness and of course weight. Indeed, despite the relatively bezel-heavy construction of the iPhone 6, it's still a one-hand-friendly device, while the Note 4 requires you to make use of both for the most part. You already know that the Note 4 is the bigger device between the two and the culprit here is the display. We're looking at a massive 5.7-inch Super AMOLED screen with an extremely high resolution of 1440 by 2560 pixels. This works out to a whopping 515 pixels per inch, which is more than your eyes can take advantage of. Turning to the iPhone 6, we've got a smaller 4.7-inch IPS screen with a lower resolution of 750 by 1334 pixels, good for a density of 326 ppi. Sure, this implies an obvious disadvantage for the iPhone 6, but as we noted before, in most scenarios, the iPhone 6 appears essentially as sharp as the Note 4. But what about core reproduction? Interestingly enough, we have a pretty unusual development here. Samsung's Super AMOLED screen actually proves to be superior, which hasn't been the case at all until now. Instead of the usual overstated hues that have become synonymous with AMOLEDs, we now have a well-tuned display if you choose the basic display mode with an outstanding color temperature of 6667 kelvins and fairly low levels of color and grayscale errors. All of this translates into a natural image that adheres to the conventional sRGB color space and that's great. In comparison, the iPhone 6 is slightly lagging behind, but only because the Note 4 is this category. Its screen's core temperature is good at 7162 kelvins, but a bit cold in comparison. Color error is also fairly low, but not as good as the Note 4. Of course, those of you who appreciate the AMOLEDs of old can still choose the AMOLED photo display mode to get that familiar, punchy look that Samsung devices are known for. One area in which iPhones traditionally excel remains a domain of the 4.7-inch panel of the 6, however, and that's maximum brightness. The Galaxy Note 4 peaks at 468 nits, which is good, but not exactly as great as the 606 nits of the iPhone 6. In practice, both phones provide a great viewing experience out on the sunlit street, though the iPhone 6 is a bit better in this regard. The most shocking difference between the Note 4 and the iPhone 6 is not simply the gap between their sizes. They also run on altogether different software platforms. With the Note 4, we're looking at a heavily skinned version of Android 4.4.4 KitKat, the TouchWiz. Now, TouchWiz has actually gone through some very positive changes as of late, specifically in terms of aesthetics, and we now have a far more intriguing visuals that are flatter and more colorful than before. We say specifically because some things haven't changed, like the fact that Samsung continues including every feature that it has ever conceived into the package. Thankfully, while these cause some disorder in the settings menu, there are enough of them that a few were bound to be excellent. A few examples are in order, and we'll start with Smart State, a deceptively simple but absolutely helpful feature that keeps the screen on for as long as you're looking at it. Also great is Multi-Window, a feature well suited for the Note 4's large screen, as it allows you to run two apps simultaneously side by side. Speaking of the larger screen, we also have to mention the specifically crafted one-handed mode, which resizes the entire UI so that you can reach all elements even when using the Note 4 single-handed. 
Last but far from least comes the iconic S Pen Stylus, which has been further polished from the one available with the Note 3. Samsung claims that it has increased the pressure needed for you to write on the new screen so that it's more in line with the pressure you exert when using a normal pen and there are, of course, a few new features. Air Command, for example, has been rearranged and new features like Smart Select have been added. Smart Select works like a wonder, just free select content and it will take a snap and then analyze it. If there are contact details and addresses, for example, Smart Select will automatically make those parts actionable so you will be able to instantly call the number or find the address on Google Maps. As for the iPhone 6, it's running on the latest version of Apple's mobile operating system or iOS 8. The latest iteration of the software brought no visual changes so we're still looking at the elegant flat aesthetics introduced with iOS 7. Thankfully, Apple has added a few new features, some of which are great. One example is the ability to finally change the default software keyboard and go for an alternative one through the iTunes Store. Also new is the special reachability feature, which is a bit alike to what Samsung has going on with its one-handed mode, though the way it is executed is different. You just tap the home button in order for the topmost parts of the screen to be brought down. The implementation is arguably more elegant, but it's not exactly as thorough. Finally, we can't skip Apple's fingerprint implementation or Touch ID, which is excellent. In comparison, the Note 4's fingerprint scanner, which is also embedded into the home screen, is more problematic as you need to swipe your finger, which is awkward with the scanner's placement. It probably comes as no surprise, but Samsung picked Qualcomm for the Note 4's processor. Though do keep in mind that in certain regions, the company's own Exynos chips are being utilized. Anyway, on board the US version is a Snapdragon 805 with its four 2.7GHz Crate 450 cores and Adreno 410 graphics. All of this is complemented with 3GB of LPDDR3 RAM. In comparison, Apple's 64-bit A8 processor with its two 1.4GHz Icon cores, PowerVR GX6450 GPU and 1GB of RAM appears out muscles but that's not at all the case. Indeed, while the Note 4 provides a smooth ride whatever you go for, synthetic benchmarks show that it is having a harder time pushing all those extra pixels, especially when talking about heavy graphical content like games. In those scenarios, and even when talking about off-screen results, the A8 actually proves a better performer. As for native storage, Note 4 users will have to settle for 32GB, though if needed expansion is possible through a microSD card. With the iPhone 6, you've got three options, a 16, 64 and 128GB models, neither of which support storage expansion. In other words, it comes down to this, Note 4 users can get extra space at a lower price, though iPhone 6 adopters are going to enjoy faster read write speeds by going for the larger models, though that's obviously going to cost them. Browsing on the Note 4 involves a choice, a pick between Samsung's own browser and Google's Chrome. In our experience, both are speedy performance and navigation is always buttery smooth. That said, we tend to stick with Chrome due to its ability to natively synchronize with its desktop counterpart. With Apple's iPhone 6, you are looking at its time-tested, excellent Safari browser. Like Chrome, Safari can also synchronize with its desktop version and it also offers a bandwidth saving reader mode which does away with any of the web pages assets that are not text. What's more, according to synthetic benchmarks, if speed is what matters the most to you, then the iPhone 6 running on Safari is a clear winner as results indicate a significant advantage in low times. On the connectivity end, we can't really complain even though there are differences. For example, the Note 4 boasts Category 4 speeds of up to 300 megabits down link, while the iPhone 6 is limited to Category 4 or 150 megabits. This implies an inherent advantage, but do keep in mind that we're still far from a time when carriers will be able to support as much bandwidth consistently. Also important if you're traveling is the fact that the iPhone 6 offers support for more LTE bands so you don't have to worry about the specific waves a given country is making use of. Moving on, we've got Bluetooth 4.1 EDR with the Note 4, but only Bluetooth 4.0 with the iPhone 6. Both have 5 GHz Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi calling and assisted GPS with GLONASS support. The two also boast NFC, though iPhone users will only be able to use it with Apple Pay. The one perk the iPhone 6 is missing and that we love is an infrared blaster which gives you control over home electronics and that's only available with the Note 4. When looking at the camera configuration of the Galaxy Note 4, it's hard not to like what Samsung is offering. We've got an optically stabilized 16 megapixel camera complemented by wide f2.2 lens, an LED flash, and super quick face detection out of focus. Up at the front, the company has fitted a generous 3.7 megapixel selfie camera with an even wider f1.9 lens and support for 1080p video. In Apple's camp, we've got an 8 megapixel eyesight camera with f2.2 lens. 
There's also a two-tone LED flash on board, along with a similar phase detection autofocus implementation. For selfies, the iPhone 6 offers a fairly low resolution 1.2 megapixel snapper capable of 720p video capture. Looking at the camera interfaces of the two devices, the differences in the company's approaches is impossible to miss. For its part, Samsung has endowed the Note 4 with a ton of extra shooting modes, including 360-degree panoramas, beauty shot and even food shot, along with manual settings for ISO, white balance metering and the like. Obviously, in order to accommodate such a wealth of options, the UI doesn't exactly feel compact or well-ordered. This is the exact opposite of what Apple has going on. A simplistic UI with minimal manual settings and relatively few shooting modes. So let's talk image quality. During the day and when outdoors, both shooters handled themselves excellently. Indeed, for the most part, putting either in the lead is trying as they both produce such great shots, but they're still different enough for us to spot some differences in behavior. For example, the iPhone 6 churns out slightly warmer shots than ideal, allowing the Note 4's colder looking shots to inch closer to what we were seeing with our own eyes. We generally stumbled upon no glaring issues with exposure and it has to be said that both snappers resolve detail very well. That said, should you wish to zoom into a picture or perhaps even print it out, you'll find that the Note 4's high resolution camera has a notable lead when details are concerned. Turning to images snapped in less ideal indoor environments, where light is not as abundant, it's becoming obvious that the iPhone 6 is the better performer on the whole. Its shots are more correctly exposed, making brighter but not unrealistic photos. On the other hand, the Note 4's shots are often comparatively darkish, covering details in shadows and darker parts of the composition. Despite its optical image stabilization, the Note 4 also proves to be inferior to the iPhone 6 when talking night shots of well-lit buildings with no flash. In our experience, the Note 4 often overexposed for such shots. In contrast, the iPhone 6 manages itself excellently, showing true-to-life exposure. The single LED flash on the Note 4 also produces photos that are colder than ideal. Such images are less of an issue with the iPhone 6 thanks to its two-tone LED flash. As for video, we've got two outstanding versatile camcorders. Both phones support standard 1080p video capture at 30 frames per second, but the Note 4 shines with its ability to also take 1080p footage at silky smooth 60fps. Overall, the two produce excellent clips, but the iPhone 6 proved better at isolating nearby sound from loud background noises. Samsung's phablet can also do 4K UHD video capture, though you better have some extra storage if you plan on shooting a lot of video in such a high resolution, as the clips are huge. Where the iPhone 6 pulls ahead is slow-mo video. It can do both 120 and 240 FPS, which is more than can be said for the Note 4's limit of 120 frames. Last but not least, both smartphones can also shoot artistic time lapses. If you spend a significant amount of your time with a smartphone watching video, there's a pretty good case to be made that the Note 4 is the more adequate device for you to go for. Its 5.7-inch screen is perfect for the purpose, more so than the 4.7-inch of the iPhone 6. If you like using your device as is, you'll probably like Samsung's video player more as it offers extras like looping, subtitles and even video editing. You can even resize the playback window and layer it on top so it follows you wherever you go. In comparison, Apple's reliable video player is focused on simply playing back clips. A situation similar to that is also true of the two devices' respective music players. The only perk of the iPhone 6, for example, is that its music player is also hooked up to iTunes radio and that might appeal to some. Extra functionality, however, is the Note 4 strong suit. Thankfully for Apple, its speaker is better positioned to deliver deep quality audio even though the Note 4 is louder overall. If you spend a lot of time on the phone and need an earpiece that is adequate, then you'll be happy to hear that our experience placing calls on both the Note 4 and the iPhone 6 has been pretty positive overall. As it stands, however, we do feel like both manufacturers could have improved the experience by offering a slightly louder earpieces. In terms of the microphones the two bring to the tables, our experience was also top-notch. The other side will recognize your voice easily as tonal information is well preserved and sound artifacts and any kinds of distortions are kept at a very acceptable level. A big reason for the controversy surrounding Quad HD displays in general has got to do with their impact on battery life and overall performance. Instead of combating the higher expected drain of the QHD panel on board its Note 4 with a significantly larger battery, however, Samsung has instead focused on optimizing various aspects of its software. The effect? A tiny bump in battery size from the Note 3, but a massive increase in actual screen on time. In our custom battery life test, for example, the Note 3 managed 6 hours and 5 minutes, while the Note 4 clocked the highest yet time for a Quad HD smartphone, 8 hours and 43 minutes. Thankfully for Samsung, despite the increase in size from the iPhone 5S, the iPhone 6's juicer is still fairly small and that shows. The 4.7-incher clocked just 5 hours and 22 minutes, 
which is average and can the toe be compared with what its rival achieved. So this is a clear win for Samsung in this regard and if you value battery life, there's a good reason you should start leaning towards the Note 4. A scenario where the iPhone 6 and the Note 4 are among your considerations is not at all that improbable. Sure, at its core, the bigger 5.5 inch iPhone 6 Plus is a more direct competitor to Samsung's phablet, but it doesn't actually exhaust all the possibilities that you'll be faced with if considering a new flagship. So go for the iPhone 6 if your only means of transporting your device are your pants pockets, as the phablet is plenty big and won't fit comfortably in most cases. Bet on the iPhone 6 if you want to get your hands on the newest and hottest apps, as those are often first released on iOS. Pick the iPhone 6 if you value low-light photography, it's just better overall in that regard. This, however, is about where the clear advantages of Apple's flagship come to an end. Indeed, the Note 4 has quite a bit going for it as well. Granted that you're ready to stomach its sugar profile. The Note 4 screen is not only much bigger, but also proved to be the one that is more true to life and the phablet's massive arsenal of extra features works very well with it. The Note 4's camera is also more flexible and image quality is right up there with the best. In fact, outdoor shots during the day ended up even slightly better than the iPhone 6's. But perhaps the biggest advantage of Samsung's latest device is the far superior battery life, a very valid concern with most of us. So it's not exactly clear cut now, is it? Then again, it never is. Once again, this was Chris with Phone Arena. Go to our website at phonearena.com for lots and lots of more coverage.